Hey everybody, friends, how you doing? So got a clamming video, catch, clean, and cook for you today. But before I started, before the video started, I wanted to say that um, I want to wish my wife a happy anniversary. 29 years we've been married. And on our 29th wedding anniversary, which was Sunday, um, she went clamming with me and helped me make this video. So uh, I dedicate this to my wife. I love you. And um, thanks a lot for coming with me and helping me and, and, and coming with me and helping me for 29 years. Uh, but uh, hope you all enjoy the video. What up, friends? <laughs> Welcome to beautiful Harker's Island again. Lynn, my wife, and I are headed out today to get some clams. Yep. Going to get a, make, maybe make a little catch, clean, and cook on clams. Get a little clam chowder. A little low-carb clam chowder recipe. We'll probably take a little cruise around today. Maybe we can get a peek at some wild horses. A lot of wild horses on Shackleford Banks here. And uh, we'll see you when we get to the clamming spot. See ya. So this is one of our favorite spots to come on the right over there behind that grass is about a football field size of muck and mud for clams and then directly across this sandbar becomes exposed and you can see the lighthouse in the distance but this sand house the sandbar becomes exposed and we can catch sand dollars or, well we can pick up sand dollars we don't really catch them and then back behind that island, there's uh, some, I do a little stone crabbing back there. And uh, and then I think there might be some scallops back there. Anyways, nice little location for us. Anybody watching my videos wants to know what we're fishing on. Me and Petey and my wife, this is my 24.5 foot Key West 2016 pair of 150 Yamahas. Got her anchored up. And she's ready. We're ready to go do some clamming. Little walk in. Beautiful morning. Gonna be a lot of birds out here. You can probably hear them. As far as I know, you're allowed to be in the muck clamming, but you can't go up on the island. Man, what a gorgeous day. Off in the distance is the Harker's Island water tower in Harker's Island and way down there is Moorhead City and a bunch of shoals between here and there we go around the outside go through if I had my skiff I'd come straight through here so I don't use rakes or anything I just put on a good pair of tight fitting socks and I let my feet do the work. There's a whelk right there. I don't know if y'all can see it. We have a lot of whelks around here. And uh, they like to eat these clams. A lot of times you find them, there's a clam up in them. So, here's what I do. I kind of walk until I feel a little, this is gonna get real soggy real quick and there's a clam right there i feel it with my foot i reach down there's one <laughs> and there's my clamming partner and i got another clam under this foot yeah oh that's a i don't know what that is that's a scallop Once I find a few after walking, I put me in a little grid and I just start going sideways like this. And I feel around with my feet. If it's not productive, 
I move on. Keep going like a typewriter. There's one under my toe right there. I can feel it. It's a baby. It's a baby. There's another one. I thought I felt one in here. Right there. That's another baby. They seem to go inside, hang in size groups for some reason. A lot of people use rakes. Yeah. There's one thing you can be certain of. You're going to get muddy. These clams we get here, you now, beans as I'm from Florida, these are the saltiest clams. There's one right there underneath my foot. There's one underneath my back heel. There's another one. That's one that's been open. As I move, I can, you feel them. This one's a big one. Yeah, he's not too big. Nice. Just keep my little, my little sewing machine going here. My little typewriter oh there's one right there there's one under my heel and you're pretty good mm. Mm. there's a big one you let him some big ones go back there's another one Another big one. Yeah, that one's okay. You gotta be careful out here because there are idiots that leave broken bottles and there's broken shelves. That's why I try and wear a pair of socks. And I'm gonna patent this as the Brian Harbaugh calf workout. Here's what my spot looks like. I'll move down a piece. Well, I st started to move and I picked up two right off the bat. Here's the third one. He's right on the border. Here's a honker. A honker. Look at that. The size of that clam, folks. That up. Yeah, but it'll be tough. All right. Yeah. Come on, size. I used to come out here and do this, and then we'd eat a bunch of clams, and then a couple days later, my left. Well, I'm thinking this is what happens when you get a little too deep. A couple days later. My left foot would start hurting so bad and I'd say, man, I did too much work out there. Ended up, clams are really bad for gout. And I had gout. Now, I haven't had a bad attack in a long time. There's one under my foot. And we're going to try it again. Some guys use rakes. I don't know that a rake would work very good out here. But this water gets flushed so well, believe it or not. There's the one. He's a keeper.
as you can see this whole area has changed tides coming in a lot of what was you were seeing before is gone most of the sandbar across the way is gone tide comes in all oh, about a foot and a half here beautiful just pure tea beautiful not a soul out here all right so i don't know 30 40 minutes we got at least four dozen clams didn't take long sure is sure is fun when you're in a place like this so i'm gonna rinse them when i get them back you know they're a little muddy in there i just kind of we got a nice tide ripping in right now the boat's turned and uh, i just try and rinse them good in this nice clean salt water this is just one bucket we split it up into two buckets That's our first mate right there. Here's the horses of Shackleford Banks. This is just a few. There's a given number that are monitored all the way uh, that run this whole bank. This bank is runs from here, comes around the corner, goes all the way down to Moorhead City. These horses are thought to be from Spanish wrecks. Uh, they're a little smaller than a normal horse because over time they actually have learned how to live on brackish uh, water. They eat this brackish grass. Um, they're all over this island. Each one has a tattooed number on its back. And uh, sometimes you're on the beach and they just kind of wander by. The beach we go to to see them, you, you have to have a boat to get there. The horses of Shackleford Banks. Wish we could get you closer, but tide's pretty low. Now they manage the uh, group of horses that are out here and you get some new horses born every year it's kind of cool to see and you, a little hard to see all the way out in the distance there but I think there's about 130 140 we're horses right down in front of you, today we're looking at horses so these horses are landlocked for now or they swam across horses are great swimmers but they got a nice green pasture here they ain't bothering nobody and uh, they'll probably hang out the sandbar will eventually at low tide will expose itself way down through there and it connects over there at the end of it but for right now they're just eating good hey y'all getting any clams Horse lover. Horse lover. I was hoping I could get a shot of a tattoo. Oh, on the back? Yeah. Uh, it's on the other I side. I know. Ooh, boy. Don't that look good? Imagine what you could do with those ingredients. I'm about to show you. Clam chowder. Gonna make a clear broth clam chowder for you today. Um, try and make it low carb or somewhat low carb ish. Uh, my wife and I are trying to watch the carbs. You got your clams, onions, celery, carrots, bacon. Remember those jalapeno poppers I made? And uh, I said, don't worry about that bacon, we'll use it somewhere else. Bam! Here it is, coming back at you. So let's get this started. First thing we're gonna do is get these clams going. So I got about somewhere around 24 to 36 clams. My wife washed them off last night. So today's Monday, Sunday morning, we caught these clams. And Sunday, as I've already said, just happened to be our 29th wedding anniversary. My wife, we caught these clams. My wife brought them back in. I rinsed them all, did all my work. My wife scrubbed them all and now we're going to get these clams going we're going to try and we're going to get them to so 
in this, what I, I like to make my chowder with chicken stock. So I put the clams in the pan. I'm gonna drop in about four cups of chicken stock and a cup of water. I think a box of chicken stock is just about two cups. Correct it is. And you know what? That covers them pretty well. I'm gonna put about a half a cup of water in there. And then I'm gonna put them on a high heat. After I blow myself up. Here's the thing about the clams, right? So you wanna boil them and you want them to open, boil them just until they open. And you wanna probably take somewhere around 20 minutes. If you get some that don't open, chuck them. Um, I've seen people eat them before and they're still living and breathing today, but if they don't open for me, I chuck them. So we, we put our 24 to 36 clams in four cups of water, I'm sorry, four cups of chicken stock, and now we're gonna wait for them open. While that's working, I'm gonna get everything else ready for the soup. In my Dutch oven, where all this is gonna end, I'm gonna start with the bacon. I don't know, three quarters of a pen to a pound. It's what I had left over from all my jalapeno poppers that I've been eating. We're gonna take this bacon. We're not gonna brown the bacon. We're just gonna let it sweat out most of its oil before, prior to it browning. Then we're gonna slowly add our celery, our carrots, and then lastly, our onions. We're gonna sweat everything down. Then I'm gonna add some spices to it. And then we're gonna start putting this together with the clams after the clams open up. All right, four minutes have passed. And this bacon has laid down enough oil that I feel comfortable that I can put something else in with it. So I'm gonna start with the carrots, because carrots are the thickest. And they need the most help when it comes to sweating down. By the way, I, it was four minutes that the bacon was going to let the oil down. Now I'm gonna put the carrots in there let them suck up a little bit of oil and then probably in two or three or four more minutes i'll put the celery in and if four or five more minutes have passed our celery's getting getting a little soft but got a nice head start i dropped the gopro in the cell in the, i'm sorry the carrots are getting a good start i dropped the gopro in the celery so there may be a few onions in this pile in this pile of celery so i'm putting the celery in and let it sweat down a little bit and last but not least our onions will go in so three four five minutes have passed carrots and the celery are starting to sweat down pretty good now we're going to hit it with our onions If I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. Best tool you can ever have. Oh yeah. Four or five minutes have passed since we put those onions in there. I'm gonna turn this down and I'm gonna season it. So I'm a firm believer you season before you put fluid in a soup or a stew or anything. Um, you know, how many times have you put your ingredients on when it's been in a, in a broth and it just floats on the top? Um, all these vegetables have oil on them. It's my opinion, and only my opinion, that the seasoning will hold much better to them. And I, I'm a firm believer, you uh, let your ingredients season your food. <clears throat> Okay, right now I'm gonna use two ingredients. I'm gonna use Italian seasoning because it has all the basic ingredients of a soup. It has thyme, it has rosemary, it has everything in it. And I just like to use it instead of individual ingredients. And I'm gonna put a little garlic on here. Um, why? Because I put garlic on everything. And if I'm cooking for Petey, I put twice as much garlic on everything because Petey don't like garlic. So anyways, a um, little bit of garlic. Some Italian seasoning, and, and you know, don't be uh, confused by the name Italian seasoning because you can use Italian seasoning in anything. I use it to make my rubs, 
with a little chili powder and uh, garlic powder and onion powder and Italian seasoning and paprika and uh, a little bit of cumin, easy on the cumin on anything you cook. So now we have a nice soup base. Um, I will put some black pepper in here. I'm not going to put any salt in here because we don't know yet what the salt content is going to be after we have the clams in there along with the broth. So and uh, it's been my experience that these clams that I get are very salty. Or not very salty, but they have a significant amount of salt. They're delicious actually. All right, so we're going to set this to the back of the stove. So you don't want these vegetables that we just made uh, mushy. This is not a roux, okay? We, you want to be able to add fluid to these vegetables and put your clams in there when you're done and whatever else you're going to put in there and then still have some consistency. So um, I usually take a carrot and bite on it. If it's, a li if it's not mushy and not crunchy, then I'll stop, stop making my, uh, uh, heating those vegetables for the soup. All right, I moved my, mix, my uh, mixture aside for a minute just so you can get a look at this. So here are our clams opened up. Oh, that was probably less than 15 minutes. Just kind of weeding through them, make sure they're all open. They sure do look like they're open. I am going to set these aside now and let them cool down a little bit. Our clams have cooled down. Actually, they haven't really cooled down a lot. But at this point, at some point, before you can go any further, you need to separate the clams. I have a little baby fork here that I stole off a of baby. And I uh, guess I better find a place to put my clam shells. And basically, when they're like this, they're so easy. You don't have to touch them long. You can handle them hot. A lot of them aren't in the shell. And just put them in something. And you can go diving for the other ones later. Whenever we're having just clams like this, of course I would have put some beer and some butter and some sausage in there. Whenever we're having clams like this, it's always a treat at the end of who can go diving to get the clams out. Okay, now you need to strain your broth. Recommend using a very tall pan because if you don't, the broth will come up to the bottom. Uh, recommend you put a paper towel in your strainer just to catch some of the stuff that your strainer might not. And try not to put about the last two tablespoons in there because that's where most of the dirt's going to be. Now your broth is ready. Transfer it to the pan, to the Dutch oven. At this point, you've got to use your own judgment. Do you want more than this? Do you want less than this? Because that's when you would add your a little bit of extra chicken stock. That looks about right for me. I'm going to put some fire to it. and let it start cooking and then I'm letting my clams cool down and I'm going to chop them up and then I will add them to the liquid and then I have some special guest butternut squash cubes that I'm going to put in there okay there's nothing special to what I'm about to do here but I'm going to lay out a few clams at a time and I'm going to chop them up I did sharpen my knife before this. I love these collapsible clipping board, cutting boards. You know, in the end, that's probably close to two cups. You didn't see this, but I went back and cooked some more clams because I didn't think I had enough. So I cooked everything I had. I was saving a dozen and I went back and cooked some more. So. You know, decent sized clams, I'd say you want to have four dozen or a cup and a half to two cups of clams. Of 
clams are in. Everybody's starting to love each other. I added, I mean, enough that looks like, you know, if you were putting potatoes in there. So I'm going to put the lid on. I'm going to come back and check these butternut squash when they're al dente. And then I'm going to have some soup. All right, once your broth returns to a boil, give it about five minutes. And find you a nice big piece of butternut squash and hit it with a fork. Boy, that went through nice. It didn't break open, which if it split in half, it probably would be not done. But it went in fine. And now I'm going to... Perfect. Give a little taste test. Remember, we're trying to replace the potato in the recipe, so you kind of want that potato consistency. A delicious, as low carb as I could get it, clam chowder, no cream, no dairy. Um, replace the potatoes with butternut squash chunks. And I think it's going to be a delicious chowder. And I can't wait to dig in. Hey, please like and subscribe. You know, that's how uh, likes really help a YouTuber. They let, know, let people know they like them. Subscribing lets you know people like you as well. Because the more subscribers, I mean, that's the thing in YouTube. Anybody who says they're not checking YouTube every day and looking at how many views they got and how many subscribers they have is probably not telling the truth. But anyways, thanks a lot for coming on this journey. Um, again, it was my 29th wedding anniversary. We had a great day. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.